Hey there, in this video we're going to be taking my Smedia server and putting it into a new case. Why? Well, mostly because I'm bored and I feel like it, and also because the media server is currently in a case that's kind of, I don't know, there's wires everywhere, it's kind of messy, it's, it's kind of hard to add things to it if I need to, and I don't know, I just don't, I like that case, but I just want to maybe use it for something else and put the server into something new. Hopefully in this video you'll notice it looks maybe a little bit better. Now I'm actually using a real camera instead of using a webcam to film this with. So hopefully this looks good and hopefully you can watch this in uh, glorious 60 FPS. So first let's take a look at um, the server we're going to be working with and then I'll show you what I'm going to be putting it into. So down here we can see a couple of computers. The one on the right here is a uh, 286. This is the old case for my capture PC or my bench PC. I, re I recently rebuilt that computer as well. This here is the Hackintosh build. And then this one here is the server. I use this as a media server and I use it to back up files and do all sorts of other stuff with it. On top is a um, Halloween decoration at, that I found at Target. When you, um, when you turn it on, there's a little like skeleton that appears on the screen and talks to you and you walk in front of it. I can show it off in another video. It's kind of neat. So, I don't know if you can, how well you can see inside due to all the glare and stuff, but um, right now this machine is still running, so I'm going to have to power it off before we do anything. I like this case, but it's missing all sorts of pieces. Like, I don't have all of the different rails to put drives in. I mean, I don't even need to use any external drives, but I also ran out of rails for internal drives, and it's got this neat little control panel here that isn't actually hooked up. I think those knobs be for, like, fan control or something, but they're not plugged in, and I'm not sure if they, if they work or anything, so. Also, if you're curious, I can show you that Right over here is my bench PC, the one I use used to use to film with the, the webcam, and I also use it to do lots of other things like look up manuals or use it to program chips or just nice to have a computer sitting at the bench here in case I in case I need it. You can see here is the webcam I used to use and just this, my desk set up. Okay. We have the server put up onto the table here, and I'll go ahead and take out this panel. So, remember when everyone thought like aliens were cool? This isn't an Alienware case, I think they just put an alien on it, maybe because Alienware, people thought aliens were cool. This system actually is by CyberPower, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but... This sticker here is a Windows XP sticker that says CyberPower on it. So this used to be a CyberPower system. I don't know what was inside of it. Obviously, some XP era system. I think it was an AMD system of the time. So, inside here we have a 650 watt power supply, which maybe is overkill, but maybe not since there are one, two, three hard drives. In here, the system started out with just this four terabyte hard drive. Then I added in this three terabyte hard drive, and since I ran out of space on those, I basically added in this bottom one, which is a ten terabyte hard drive. So the server itself is a super micro board, and it is using a socket C32 CPU. That's an AMD Opteron. This is a eight core CPU. And has 16 gigs of ECC memory. Also has a Radeon Pro in it, which I bought so I can do video encoding. But this video card isn't. The video card works. It has hardware encoding and everything, but in Linux the software support for it isn't that great. So when I use FFmpeg on that video card, it I think it runs slower than just doing it on the um, on the CPU, which. It's not a hardware thing, I think it's just a software thing, so... So mostly what I use this system for is for video files. I have movies and music and stuff stored on it. I also have 
backups of all sorts of old systems. Probably backups like you probably removed, but those are also on here. Um, I can also SSH into this from anywhere to access the files. I also use this to SSH to servers that I cannot access otherwise due to firewall restrictions. Um, this has a container running on it that I use to um, help compile. I use um, disk CC so that my, way my computer upstairs, if I need to compile something, I could have this help. And well, as you can see, this case is a bit of a, uh, a mess. There's also before like RGB LEDs and stuff. So it's got this like cathode tube here. We can really see see that. But at the bottom here is a, um, a cathode tube. Hope this footage isn't too shaky, but yeah, you can see there is a cathode tube, and I think also a dead spider and just a rat's nest of wires in here. This is a modular power supply, but with nowhere to stash the extra wires, it just looks kind of like a friggin' mess. And it's also all sorts of other wires from the case, such as that little control panel up front, and a bunch of other stuff that isn't connected, like the front panel audio, because I don't really need that on a server. So, first things first, we're going to take this apart into all its pieces, and then we will put it into a new case. Now this might be a silly way to do it, but seeing that as this is a modular power supply, I can just unplug the cables from it, and then unscrew the power supply to take it out. Let's get all these out of here. Yeah, maybe I should disconnect the other ends of the cables first, like unplug the motherboard and the hard drive and stuff, but eh, this should be fine. And then just unscrew the power supply and try not to lose these screws. Just, I mean, I have plenty of extra screws, but let's try to keep these around. So now we may notice this power supply says RGB on it. You know, I don't really need RGB. In a server, I didn't buy it because of RGB, and luckily it has an RGB off button. I bought it because it was a good price, and also because I wanted enough power to power the system and all the drives. And using the power supply calculator, I think I found out this server maybe should use like 400 watts or something, so 650 watts isn't too bad, though. That's at like, you know, max usage. Normal usage is maybe only like 150 watts, or even that. I don't know, this doesn't use a lot of power. So let's put the power supply down and you can disconnect the hard drives and get them out. This top one is a 3 terabyte drive by HGST. The 4 terabyte drive is also an HGST drive. And the bottom drive is a drive I just bought. A 10 terabyte Exos drive. Um, so I have a lot of backups on here, like backups of my gaming computer, backups of other machines, and I was usually trying to copy like two terabytes of backups to it, and the combined seven terabytes of storage this machine had currently wasn't enough, I was running out of space, so 10 terabytes really isn't that much when you're copying terabytes of, de of backups to it. Though those backups can probably be erased, they're probably old and out of date, but I don't like deleting stuff. I'm a bit of a hoarder, so I'm gonna keep those as long as I can. Um, so now taking the rest of this out is going to be fun, isn't it? This big bundle of wires and... Oh, lest I forget that in the five and a quarter inch bay is actually an SSD, which is the boot drive for this system. I need that because without a boot drive, you don't have, you know, an operating system. That would be bad. Let's see if I can't get that out of there. Oh, it might be like screwed in or something. Well, 
I will get that out. Well, with the case out of the way, we have the motherboard freed. I probably didn't need to unplug the fan header for the CPU, but whatever. So like I said, this is a super micro board. This is an H8 SEM board, socket C32. This is an Opteron 4365EE, with the EE standing for energy efficient. Um, so this board has some cool features. Um, being a server board, you can do lots of things over the built-in serial, like you can even get to the BIOS and the boot screen and all that over serial. Um, it's got dual gigabit ethernet, though I only use one. Interestingly, it has a old school PCI slot on it, as well as some PCI Express slots. Um, things it doesn't have though, it's got USB 2, but does not have USB 3. Though for that, I have a PCI Express USB 3 card. It does have SATA ports, but they are only SATA 2, and all my hard drives are SATA 3, so I have a SATA HPA card, not a RAID card, just four SATA ports, nothing special. And so, with this out, we're going to get our new case and get this in there. So now it's time for an unboxing. For the case, I went with this case by Deepcool. Why'd I go with this case? because it's smaller than that one, because that board's actually a micro ATX board, so I can use a slightly smaller case. And also, this case has three hard drive slots in it, and so did the other one, but I don't know. I just want something smaller, and everyone added another hard drive. I didn't have the correct rails to mount a hard drive in that, and I have my another hard drive for this one. I could probably put it in the five and a quarter inch bay that I'm not going to use. So, I don't know. This case looks pretty nice. Maybe it's not really a server case. It's a cheap gaming case, but it should do the job just fine. Let's get it on out of this box here. Hopefully a lot nicer cable management than the other one. And if I could get it out of the box. So we've got it out of the box and first off, this case is a lot better than I thought. And also, it is teeny tiny compared to the big old case that the server used to be in. So it should hopefully be look a lot nicer there. Another thing, this case has USB 3 ports whereas the other case did not have USB 3 ports and I needed to add in a USB 3 front panel adapter. Luckily that um, USB 3 PCI card has the front panel connector so I can actually use this. This being a gaming case, it seems to actually have a um, tempered glass side panel or at least an actual glass panel here. I mean, I guess you don't really need a glass panel for, you know, a server, but this case was actually pretty inexpensive and I don't know, I like it. I like having the panel just to see my server. Why not? Let's take this glass off and put it in the box, store it somewhere safe. So, this, as you can see, this case has a one fan pre-installed, but I don't know how good these fans are or how quiet they are, so we have another package here. This one, as you may have guessed, contains some fans. Since I want them to be quiet, I got some be quiet fans. 120mm EWM fans. Two of them actually. One for the back of the case and one for the front. One fan is going to go right in front of where the hard drives are to keep them cool. So I've taken the case fully apart, taken the back panel off, taken the front panel off, and one thing I've heard other YouTubers talk about this case is it doesn't come with any instruction manual. I mean, it's a case, it's probably not too complicated to figure out where things go, but it'd be nice to have some sort of manual, so 
obviously this front fan goes here and then another fan goes where the back one is so I'm just going to go ahead and screw those on and then we'll move on to installing the motherboard to the case. So this case not having a manual does cause a little bit of problems so I wanted to put this fan here where the hard drives go and there are four screw holes that line up with it but the way the screw holes are punched out you have to screw it in from this way, you can't screw it in from this side, and so that I'm not really sure how you're supposed to properly mount this. Considering using these little mounting things from a Noctua fan, these are little rubber mounts, so I might try that. But I'm not sure I'm supposed to install the hard drive, so I think you may need to install the hard drives into their slots first, because I think you need to screw them in these rails here first so I can't put the fan on and I don't know this case is a little weird now that I don't have a manual for it so let's see let's take one of our one of our hard drives and see if I can't figure out how to slide it into one of the hard drive mounts here okay so that slides in there and yeah, I think you would screw it in here on this side and then on the other side. So I'll, I'll screw in our three hard drives and then somehow figure out how to get the fan on there as well. Well, now the case is certainly heavier with a bunch of hard drives in it. I screwed the three hard drives into the hard drive bays. There are some screw holes you can see on the inside here and then the rest are here so interestingly you know if you want to add or remove hard drive you have to take the front panel off I put the fan here so hopefully the hard drives still stay cool even though they're below the fan I really want to put the fan in front of them but now as you can see with the hard drive screwed in there's no way to screw a fan in there, so I'm not sure what these other mounting holes were for, so, well, oh, I guess there's one thing that I'm, I'm missing here, um, besides the hard drives, I also need the SSD. So this case looks to have a couple of SSD mounts, seems to be one here, though I think this one would mount in the back of the case. And there also seems to be one right on top of the hard drive cage, which looks like two screws and then two little pegs that you can just clip into where the screws go. So I guess this goes there, like that. And I just push it in, maybe? Yep, okay. Yeah, I think that works. Again, it'd be nice to have some sort of manual for this, but yeah, I guess you can see I'm, I'm figuring it out. I hope I can put the front panel back on. Like, I hope I didn't put the fan cable where the front panel cables are supposed to go. So, let's see if I screwed anything up. So again, lack of instructions here is a little bit of a problem. I guess the fan should be mounted on the inside of the case, not the outside, because can't put the front panel back on because the fan is in the way. Not that it doesn't fit. It fits. It's fine. Like, there's plenty of space in the front panel for a fan. Like, it looks like you're supposed to put a fan there, but the, fan, the case just won't clip shut because there's two little like posts that back into the fan. So, I guess I'll take the fan off, put the fan inside the case, and then put it back together. Okay, so the front panel is back on, and the front fan is installed, and I don't know if you can see, but it's actually sitting on top of the SSD. I mean, it's an SSD, so it's fine. I don't think it's like bending it or anything, but it does mean if you want to take the SSD out, I'd have to take the fan out, because that's kind of silly. I also went ahead and put the AO shield in, so now if we Hopefully bend all these wires out of the way. We can put our motherboard into the case.
Here's our board. Before I put her in the case, just give her a nice once over. Yeah, there was a bit of dust that came off of that. That's good. Looks like our six standoffs are already reinstalled, so take our board and drop it on in. You can see the board in the case. I'm going to go ahead and screw it in. So I think I just figured out what these big long screws that came with the case are for. I think I can use these to put the fan in front of the hard drives where I wanted to put it to begin with. I think that's what this is for. I'm going to try that. Yep, that is exactly what these big long screws are for. They fit right through the fan and screw right into those holes I saw before that I could have sworn a fan would go in, but I can't figure out how to screw one in. So yeah, one thing about this case, really wish it came with a manual. All right, I got things looking pretty good. Got the front panel back on, got the fan installed up there where I want it. Got all the front panel Cable routed through the case. We'll deal with cable management later. Now let's get the power supply installed. So, one thing about um, this motherboard is, if you see that it is a server board, the ATX connector is up on top here. Normally it would be like on this side of you know, a gaming, ca gaming motherboard, so kind of has some challenges with cable management due to some of the interesting places of things. Also, on this board, some of the front panel connectors are in kind of weird spots, like the power button and stuff. Like, it's a little bit confusing. It's not the way you would expect it on a gaming motherboard, so that's something I'll have to deal with on my own. Well, as that was it before, I used extension cords to do it and stuff, so I'll deal with it once I get to it. So let's get our power supply lined up and screwed in. So installed in this server was a video card. It says Radeon Pro WX2100, a workstation card. And I bought it because it has video encoding, but like I said, due to certain software, the video encoding doesn't work all that well on this card due to just some weird Linux software stuff with FFmpeg and whatnot. And once I can figure out how to open up this box, I will show you something fun. Inside this box, all of this. Now we have an NVIDIA Quadro P620. This is basically the NVIDIA version of that Radeon card. And this has NVENC on it, NVENC encoder, which does work a lot better in Linux than the Radeon equivalent. Interestingly, yeah, about the same size, quite a little bit smaller. So, this P620 is about the same as like a GTX 1050, and this is a little bit weaker. This is maybe similar to like a 1030, but they're about the same, same power. Alright, so now I'm going to start some of the wiring on this, and what I was saying about the front panel connector, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but in the manual, Here's the pinout for the front panel connector, and it's not quite like any ones you've seen on on a normal machine. I guess like the power and ground here is set and ground are there, but then you have a bunch of like three volts here, and here's the power LED and the H hard drive LED, and next to them are 
live voltages. You'd have you have to basically split the cable up and then connect one to here and then one to ground or HDD and then find a ground here or another ground. Like it's it's really silly. I don't know why it's like that. Maybe there's certain server cases that can use this, but it's it's a little annoying. Yeah, so what I do is I use just these extension cords, male on one end, female on the other, to basically just split the connector where I want it to go so that way I can connect the LEDs and stuff to the correct ports. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this on up and then we can go over cable management and everything else that's going to go in here. So one more annoying thing about this motherboard is the cables for the modular power supply, the CPU connector, 8-pin CPU connector, this one, uh, is split into 4 and 4 and it's got a nice clip on it. But the problem is, on the motherboard, there's a capacitor right under that connector and that clip just doesn't actually fit in the board for some stupid reason. So I use this kind of ugly looking extension cord, but I have no choice because that won't fit because there's a capacitor in the way and this clip is slightly smaller so it actually fits on the board properly. It's, there's a lot of kind of dumb things about this board but I do like it so let's just work around those weird things. Okay so you can see things are plugged in but cable management is still a mess. There's a couple reasons for that. One is, well, wait, hold on. Oh, okay. There's a screw on the table. Nothing in the case. One reason is the USB controller requires Molex power. I'm using a Molex to solder cable, so I don't have to run as many cables from the modular power supply, but I still need to run a power cable to here. I also need to connect the front panel USB 3 header to here. And then all the SATA ports have to go to, or I say the cables have to go to the HVA card, which is here. So I'm going to have cables running through the front here like this. I can try my best to cable manage these a little bit better, but I don't know how much I can really do it. And I guess I didn't really need all of the extension cables for the front panel headers as I thought. I don't know why I ran that many extension cables. The power and reset lines were easy. There's actually another location for the power, which is over here, next to the internal USB port. And I just need an extension cable for the hard drive activity light, and everything is all all wired up. So I'm going to do my best to get some cable ties and stuff in here to maybe hopefully wrangle some of these wires a little bit, and let's see what we can do. Alright, it's not pretty, but it's cable managed the best I can. There's literally no space between the back of the case and the back panel. Like, there's no space here for cable management. There's a little bit of space here where the hard drives are, but the best I did was sort of stuff cables underneath this lip and this lip, and I guess throw everything into behind the power supply because there's really nowhere else to put things. So I really hope this case can close, especially with this. Um, extension cord for the power, CPU power connector and I don't even know if supposed, you're supposed to use SATA cables here. I guess it's supposed to use right angle SATA cables but my right angle SATA cables point down not like up or the right way so we're sort of bent a bit and so I hope this thing will close. I'm gonna attempt to put the back panel on. Well, that was harder than it looks, and I guess the case is one saving grace. As you can see, there's kind of a bulge here in the panel. I guess this is where all the wires are supposed to go when the panel is shut. I kind of wish that there was just more space between the back of the tray and the panel, and the panel was just, you know, flat, with this bulge, but at least it's closed. Spinning it around. I mean, it's not it's not so bad. You can see some cables sticking through behind the cable management holes here. 
I guess that's okay there. Like, yeah, you can see there's space here now with the back panel there, but it's not perfect. The ATX cables here are just kind of annoying because they're just how they're just how they are. That's where it is, and all these cables going in the front. I'm gonna see if I can throw some more cable ties in here just to clean up a little bit, and then I'll put the glass panel on, and we'll make sure it works. So yeah, I mean, it's still kind of ugly, but I mean, it's not the worst. It's no, it's supposed to be a server. It's not supposed to be a gaming PC or anything. You know, it looks cool. It's just supposed to, you know, work. So speaking of work, let's make sure it does. It is kind of bad luck to at least seal up with this system before making sure it works, so plug it in and make sure it turns on. Alrighty, we've got power connected along with keyboard and the monitor. So making sure we have our power supply switched on. Going to our power button. Make sure it posts. That fan spinning, that fan spinning. I can assume the front, yep, yeah, front fan seems to be spinning. This does take a while to get to a post screen, so. Well, that's, that's good. Let's make sure we can get into an operating system. So the hard drives, they are not in any sort of RAID, they are using LVM in Linux, so it doesn't really matter the order they're connected in, it just needs to make sure they all exist, and you can see there all four were detected, so let's just make sure it actually can boot into something. And it can't. Um, I think I know why. I think I moved the SATA card to a different PCI Express slot, so I might need to go into the BIOS and make sure it knows where root device it is, so pretty sure that's what the issue is. I'm going to try that, and then we'll try this again. Yep, that was the problem. I just had to go into the BIOS and change the hard drive boot priority and make sure it boots off of the SSD, which is where the bootloader and the main OS is installed, so now you can see it is booting. My server is named Tron, and you can see it is at my login screen, which means this is a success. It means all four drives were detected, the LVM was enabled, and everything is, is good to go. I'm going to shut it on down, put the case on, and put it back where it goes, and then power it back up and let it be a server again. So if you want to know, here's some more... Here's some stats about the server. It's running Debian. Like I said, it's an Optron 4365 EE. 16 gigs of DDR3 ECC RAM. The Matrox is the built-in PGA on the motherboard. And then you can see the Quadro is also detected. I'll have to make sure the driver is installed and hopefully FFmpeg to be able to talk to NVENC just fine and hopefully that'll work better than the Radeon did. Alrighty. Glass back on. Looks pretty good. I don't know if this is tempered glass because it's, you know, just glass. It's pretty see-through. Might have got some sponges on it. Might want to clean it, but all in all, it looks not the worst. Slightly better than what it was, and it's functional. I'm going to go ahead and put it back, power it up, make sure to plug in the Ethernet so it could actually be a server, and then we're good to go. Nope, here's our new server. It's even shorter than our Hackintosh. And also, what's a build video with about one additional problem? This case is much shorter, and the power supply cable, the power supply is on the bottom, so the power cable I connected to it didn't reach. I didn't have to 
get a longer one, luckily. I just had to basically uncable manage it and move it around a little bit so it can reach to where the new power supply location is now. See, so yeah, it's looking pretty good. Might be weird to have a glass side panel without any lights in it, but I don't want any lights in it. And so, our saga is done. This is my new server. It is smaller, and it is nice. Have a nice day.